Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying video I'm going to show you how to tie a really simple crest bug but on a jig hook. Stay tuned. Before we start tying, let's take a quick 360 look at the fly. This is a crest bug imitation. You'll notice a couple things. Uh, number one, this is tied on a jig style hook. and I, I really prefer that in larger sizes and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the actual tying. Number two, we want this to really imitate that crest bug. So what we're going for is a very, very thin profile in terms of that vertical placement. We want it really wide in this sense where you're looking at it from that top view and from the bottom view. I'm going to show you how to do that right now in the tying portion. Let's start tying this crest bug. In my Stonefo Transformer vise, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. It's their J100BL. It's a jig hook. I really like to tie this particular fly in a size 14. Now that's specific to this style of hook. Whenever I tie it on a regular straight, uh, we'll say a straight shanked hook, I will go the whole way down to a size 18. So I definitely will vary the size, though on these jig hooks I really prefer it in kind of the larger sizes because I feel that once they're riding in the water, they'll be riding upside down and they, they really seem less likely to snag up, get hooked on other stuff. Um, and So I really kind of like it again in that size 14. I also have paired this with a tungsten slotted bead. The color is black nickel. It's about a two and a half millimeter bead. And the first thing I'm gonna, going to do is I'm going to place a little bit of wire on it. The size is 0.015. I'll go down to 0 0.010 occasionally, but what I like about this is it's really easy to build this up. Let me show you how I'm going to place this on. I'm going to just leave the wire directly on the spool. I'm going to hold on to the, the loose end. I'm going to start it about three quarters of the way back. And I'm not going to worry about making sure they're extremely tight together. So when I pinch them together, I'm going to kind of take a look at it. I want them to take up about, we'll say two thirds of, the, of this hook shank, but I don't want much more than that. Now I'm going to keep it closer to the, the bead. Then I'm going to wrap back and I'm going to try to make these wraps nearly touching. I'll go back about almost two thirds of the previous. And then I'm just going to bring it right back forward And just pull it off right by the bead. I have this little extra piece kind of back here. I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to pull that off. There's a little bit remaining. I can just tuck that around. So what I've done, I've kind of created a natural taper to the body. Now what's nice about these crest bugs, they actually sell um, pieces of, we'll say metal, this lead that you can place on your shank and it's really done for you. Though, as you can see, it's pretty easy to do that. Next, I'm just going to go to my thread. I'm using some ADOT Gray Uni. Now, at times I will use black if I don't fish this with a bead head. But because I'm pairing this with the, the jig hook, I'm going to use that black nickel head so I can just get away with a, a gray thread. Kind of match the body color. I'm going to lock it in place directly behind the bead. Let's get that out of there. And then next, I really want to take some time and just start to, number one, get all this wire from moving all over the place. You can see it was starting to turn right when I first started placing that thread on it. But I really want to hide a lot of the wire. So I'm just going to kind of cover it up. Move these lights just a little bit. I see a little bit of a shadow in there. So I'm going to take a little bit of time. Now this is ADOT unit thread. If you kind of want to speed up the process, go with a 6 aught. I want to just keep it right there, so I'm going to use my fingernail to kind of guide it where I want that thread to go. Don't worry about covering everything completely, not yet anyway. I'm going to leave my thread hang at the back, and the next step is one of the most important ones in my mind, and that's we're going to take a pair of pliers, and I'm going to flatten it, because the profile of a crest bug is extremely flat, so we want to make sure that we keep this as flat as possible. Now you're going to notice as soon as I make that first one, it's going to all kind of spread out. So even though it's, I've pushed it up closer to the, the, um, the eye of the hook, it's really going to go down, almost wrap a little bit around the shank. So here's squeeze one, squeeze two, and squeeze three. Now you can see we definitely have flattened it. We've widened it as well. And now we're going to go back through one more time with our thread. 
try to cover up all those spots because the worst case scenario of this is that once you start applying your dubbing and we're going to be pulling it out with some Velcro, you'll see some of that wire poking through. And I'll be honest, I don't think it affects the, the catch rate with this pattern. However, it just doesn't look that great. So we want to make sure that we are tying this in a way that's going to be presentable. So I'm going to do my best to kind of cover up all these pieces on your side of the camera. I'll kind of give you a peek at what they look like right now. You can see there's a lot of the, those edges just kind of poking through. Now if you want, you can go back through with your wires and just gently push a little bit, but by doing it too much, it will almost kind of be counterproductive to what you're trying to achieve with the, the flatness. So I'm not going to worry too much about those. Next, I'm going to grab some really fine wire. I'm going to use silver. This is going to be our ribbing. I'm just going to lock a piece of this in. And next, we're ready to basically finish off the pattern. I'm going to be dubbing this pattern. I'm going to be using this Dave Whitlock SLF dubbing. It's called Pattern Blends. The exact color of this one is called Salbug Gray. Uh, I really love this color. Um, it's done really well for me, though I can tell you, you don't necessarily have to run out and buy this specific color gray. I've done really well with lots of other colors, um, lots of other shades of gray, though I'll talk a little bit more about this specific dubbing after I finish tying this pattern. Now to apply this on, I want to be generous. Now I grabbed a giant hunk. We're not going to use this entire hunk, but I can tell you I'm, I'm going to try to taper it, so I'm going to put a little bit less on my double, dubbing noodle at first. Then I'm going to obviously get a little bulky, but we're going to be picking this fly out. So I want to make sure that I have enough dubbing in there that whenever I pick it out, it's not going to simply remove all the dubbing, and then I'm going to be left looking at the under wraps of gray and some of that wire poking through. So at times, whenever I dub this, I really say to myself, geez, I'm putting a lot of dubbing on here. Then I always end up adding a little bit more. So if you feel like you're, you, you've put on a lot, you probably put on the right amount. One thing I'll notice, as with a lot of synthetics, it can be tough to simply dub this on. So I'll just wet my fingers a little bit, just to kind of help keep everything in one place. And once I get it there, I'm just going to start this wrap up. And I want to really ensure that I have everything covered. So you'll see I'll, I'll actually kind of go over a couple times near this, the head but it's a little bulky up there. I think I don't want it that bulky. I may have gotten a little carried away. And once I get really close to the head, I just want a little bit up there. So I have a little bit of room to kind of finish tying off. That looks really good to me right there. Now what I'm gonna do with this wire, I'm actually going to counter rib this. I wanna take my time because I wanna make sure it looks as though it's been ribbed properly. But I am gonna use this ribbing to Number one, illustrate all the body segments, but number two, it will help to protect this fly from coming apart. So once I get it near the, the bead, just a few wraps in front, a couple wraps behind the wire. I can simply get it out of the way. Finally, I'm just gonna go through a couple whip finishes to hold my thread in place. Again, just do a quick 360. Make sure ribbing looks fine, it does. Uh, make sure there's no wire poking through. It could be a little bit up there. And then finally, I'm gonna grab a little bit of head cement. I use this Sally Hansen Hard as Nails. Put this on a little Jasper style. Put it directly onto the thread. Return to my whip finish. Now, I'm complete with that part. However, we need to finalize this. And what I'm gonna do is actually grab some type of a dubbing brush. This is one from Stonfo. There's a lot of different dubbing brushes out there. It's basically Velcro. Now, I can tell you, I also keep a little piece of Velcro on my fly tying desk. For some reason, I really prefer this brush to the Velcro. I, am, I promise you, I'm not trying to sell it to you, but it really does an excellent job of picking out um, all this dubbing. And if you have a really good brush, uh, please mention it in the comments section below or if you just prefer Velcro. But I can tell you, this brush really works well for me. And how I pick this out is pretty simple. I'm going to bring it down about maybe 15, 20 times on each side. I'm going to bring it down a bunch, but then I'm also going to go kind of work back up. 
that will really help to poke some of those lower fibers out. I want to keep this stuff on this side. I'm going to do the same on the side facing you. Going down then back up. Once I do that, we're going to have a bunch of this stuff just kind of splaying out. And at that point, I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to cut it pretty close to both sides. Some of these will kind of peek off the back. I don't need them there. I'll go along the top. I don't want anything there along the top. Be careful when you're going along the top. And if you're going to try to poke along the bottom, I have definitely cut my ribbing before doing that, and that is not what you want. Instead, you just want all those fibers kind of splaying out there whenever you're fishing this. What I can tell you though, after a while, if you catch a lot of fish on this, all those little fibers, they won't be poking out anymore. So by all means, hopefully your jacket or maybe your fly fishing vest has some Velcro on it, but if it doesn't, put just a little piece of Velcro in your vest, and whenever you're out fishing, you're fishing this, this crest bug, you can just take it, poke some more stuff out, I'm sure you probably carry some scissors or at least your nippers, then you can go back through and just trim it again while you're on the stream and kind of get that, that profile that you're looking for, which is we want it really flat, we want it wide, and we want those little pieces kind of splaying out a little bit to represent that crest bug body. So that is the finished crest bug. There's a 360. I'll do the same with the lights off. Again, I do know that sometimes there's some color variations with my camera. Then I'll put these lights back on one more time, get a little closer. And now let's change the camera angle a little bit and we'll talk more about this crest, bu crest bug imitation. So the crest bug is definitely one of those flies that you can forget about every now and then. And I'll tell you a quick story that illustrates this. So I was fishing with my buddy Dirk and we were on this beautiful little spring creek and we were just doing so-so as we were nymphing and working our way upstream when all of a sudden Dirk cut two trout just like that, really quick on this little gray generic nymph. It was really a nothing pattern, but he caught some fish on it. We both kind of wondered why. So I continued to work upstream and as I went around this little bend, I looked into the water and saw a ton of watercress. And watercress tells me two things. First off, when you see it, you know that stream is doing well because it takes really high quality water for that crest to grow in. And number two, that crest is typically loaded with crest bugs and trout love them. So you can kind of put two and two together and see how the thing slowly started working in my brain. It told me fish the crest bug on this stream and it's sensed on really well on that spring creek and on so many others that feature that water crest that you should look for. Now let's talk a little bit about crest bugs and I am definitely not up in that higher standard when it comes to entomology. What I do know is that crest bugs are different than scuds. You typically see crest bugs tied on a straight shank hook versus scuds are tied on that curved shank hook. Can you also tie these crest bugs on that curved shank? Yeah, without a doubt, go for it. Put, put them on those scud hooks. I've done really well on them with that style of hook as well because when I think about nymphs that are kind of getting caught in the current and they're in a vulnerable position, in my mind, I can definitely see them just kind of tightening up a little bit and taking on that more defensive style posture as they drift downstream. Now, to tell you much more about these crest bugs, all I really can kind of get to is the fact that they are very thin and very wide, which is why during this fly tying video, we were kind of forcing that wire down, pinching that wire down with our pliers to kind of get to that same body style on our patterns. And I definitely recommend you to do that because to me, that's one of those really key features to this pattern. Now, kind of keeping on that fly tying perspective, uh, one of the dubbings that I used, or the main dubbing in this video, was the Dave Whitlock, one of the SLF pattern blends. I really love this stuff. It's great material. The color I went with was Salbug Gray. Um, can you go with other grays? Yeah, without a doubt. Grays, some dark brown, some tan sometimes. There's lots of great colors out there. The main reason why I chose this was because it's easy to find this in fly shops all around the country and online. Um, I tend to fish a lot of these crest bugs with um, dubbing that's been blended by hand. Uh, maybe a couple buddies of mine have put together some flies with this style of color on it. But I wanted to make sure that if I was gonna feature one, there's a color that I put out there that all of you could readily purchase. I actually walked into a TCO fly shop in Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania. If you have a chance to check it out, by all means do it. It's just a wonderful shop. I talked to one of their, mount, their managers, a buddy of mine, his name is Alex, just a great guy. They've got a lot of really just incredible stuff going on at their fly shop. And I tried to make it simple. I said, Alex, pick me out a really good Crestbug body material. 
he handed me this pack, the rest is history. So I can definitely recommend this, but if you have any other packs that you would suggest, uh, any other colors or any other specific dubbings, please mention them down below in the comments section. Well, finally, let's talk a little bit about fishing this pattern. When it comes to crest bugs, they can definitely be fished in slow moving water, some medium water, or really that heavy white water. Though I tend to fish them pretty regularly in the riffles. I like to put them on with another fly, sometimes a heavier fly, and I'll fish these just a little bit behind that heavy fly. And as they come down, those fish just really have just a quick second to decide if they're going to take it or not. And they definitely like this pattern in a lot of these spring creeks. Whenever I'm nymphing with this, I tend to keep my leader kind of out of the water. So maybe a portion of my leader's in the water and I'm guiding these, these nymphs right through that current. And I'm really trying to have that direct connection to them so I can feel when those fish just mount that nymph. And as soon as you feel any slight tug, any slight movement or any stop, simply raise that rod, give it a little bit of force because if it's a fish, you want to make sure you're going to be setting the hook. Speaking of the hooks, um, as I mentioned during the, the tying portion, I tend to only tie this on the jig hooks to a size 14. So I love all the larger crest bugs on those larger size of jig hooks. As I get to the smaller sizes, I tend to just go with a normal nymph straight shanked hook because I don't really get these caught up a lot on the bottom. Because I'm fishing these in those riffles, it seems like they're really just bouncing along. I have my split shot put on accordingly and I don't have a lot of problems. But uh, by all means, try out those jig nymphs in the smaller sizes or go with a straight shanked hook in the larger sizes. I kind of do a mix and match, but if you want all jigs, by all means, go with it. Well, with all that said, thank you so much for, for viewing this video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them down in the comments section or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Also, if you know anything in regards to the entomology about the crest bug, please post it down there because when I did just uh, some quick Google searches and looked through some of my books, there's a little bit of information, but there's definitely not a lot out there. So if you have anything to add to this conversation, definitely do so because I really look at that comment section as kind of a resource page for all of us to, to benefit from. And I'd love to hear more from you about these crest bugs. If you'd like to watch more of my fly tying and fly fishing videos, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have all of those related social media accounts. You can search for Trout and Feather on Facebook and on Instagram. On Facebook, you'll see a lot of articles that I post, um, some stuff about fly tying and fly fishing. For instance, I recently posted a really great article about Lefty Cray. Versus my Instagram it tends to be a little bit behind the scenes with some of these videos. You'll get some sneak peeks, occasionally a giveaway, um, and then hopefully a fish that I've recently caught or flies that I'm tying at my vice. Well, once again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you guys next time.